Welcome back to another round of science vocabulary. This week in science, we have a long list um, because it is actually covering two topics. It's covering um, infectious disease and also the spread of disease. We're going to use these words this week and next week, so make sure that these words are all in your science vocabulary document and that you've written down what you think the words mean if you were asked to do so. Um, right now, we're going to start off with microbiology. Microbiology is just going to be the study of microbes. This is something that requires the use of a microscope or other technology um, to study the microbes that help us and also the microbes that harm us. Um, the first step in studying these microbes is to classify them. And so we're going to do those with two general categories and then a specific type of organism that's only kind of an organism. So the first categories are going to be prokaryotic and eukaryotic or prokaryotic and eukaryotic, however you want to say it. Um, prokaryotic is this guy over here. Um, bacteria are going to be an example of a prokaryotic organism. They do not contain a nucleus. They do not contain membrane-bound organelles beyond ribosomes. So you'll see this is a very, very primitive cell. Um, it only contains ribosomes, and then the DNA and RNA is just contained inside of a nucleoid uh, zone in the, inside the cell. Um, over here, this is a eukaryotic cell. Eukaryotic cells are what we think of when we think of cells. Uh, these are going to have the membrane-bound nucleus that contains your DNA and RNA. These contain the membrane-bound organelles that we learned about in seventh grade. And then um, we used, again, these past couple of weeks in healthy living and molecular biology. So we have prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. Um, we also have viruses. Viruses are not a cell. Viruses are not, um, they're not living. Uh, viruses are going to be a container um, of various shapes. And that container is going to hold either DNA or RNA, but never both. Um, viruses only contain one or the other. These DNA or RNA are going to be surrounded by a capsule. And that capsule is going to be covered with little proteins that can latch on to specific types of cells. Um, different viruses can infect different specific types of cells. Um, that's why you can't necessarily get a virus that uh, affects a different animal. Um, and also why if a virus that typically affects the animal like bird flu or something like that spreads to humans, it's so devastating uh, because that virus is going to be new to us. Um, viruses are very, very specialized. They infect a cell uh, by injecting their DNA or RNA into it, take over the cell, destroy the cell to form new virus, and then those viruses spread. An example of a virus would be the influenza virus. The influenza virus is the virus that causes the flu. So viruses are not a living organism, but they can infect living organisms to carry on their life functions and reproduce. Now bacteria. Uh, bacteria are going to be a prokaryotic organism. Um, they can be single, they are single celled, but can be colonial, meaning they live together as a clump. Um, most bacteria in our lives are going to be good or neutral. Um, some bacteria are bad, and those are going to cause infections and diseases. Uh, some examples would be these um, lacto family of bacteria that live inside of our bodies and help us digest our food. Um, some bad diseases be clostridium and staph and E. coli um, that can cause infections or make us sick. Protozoa and algae are two types of protists. Um, protozoa and algae are protists. They are eukaryotic. They have a nucleus. You can see a little nucleus um, inside of our amoeba right here. Um, then there's some other smaller micronucleuses because amoebas are odd little creatures. Um, protozoa are going to be single-celled organisms that are similar to animals. Algae are single-celled organisms that are similar to plants. 
Um, protozoa and algae are both of the kingdom protist. Protozoa and algae are both eukaryotic organisms. Um, algae are going to be photosynthetic. Protozoa are not. Fungi are a kingdom of organisms uh, that we don't talk about very much. They can be single-celled. They can also be multicellular. They can reproduce sexually. They can also reproduce asexually. Um, they can live by themselves. They can also live in colonies. Uh, that makes them very, very, very survivable. Uh, these are eukaryotic organisms, again. Um, they are going to reproduce sexually by spores. And those spores are going to make it so you have enough genetic diversity to get into different ecosystems. Once they're in an environment where they're successful, they can reproduce asexually and quickly take over an area. That's why you start off with a little tiny bit of mold and that spreads over an entire surface. Uh, once that mold becomes established, then it's able to quickly asexually reproduce itself and spread over a surface, uh, take o taking over the fibers and materials inside of a building material. Uh, the same thing can happen inside of your uh, lungs or other body tissues. And so fungus can be a potential um, thing that makes us sick. Things that make us sick are called pathogens, which isn't necessarily a vocab word, but it is something that you should probably know. Uh, parasite is just a, this is from the ecosystem unit. Uh, this is a type of symbiotic relationship where an organism lives inside of another organism. Um, the parasite is successful, but it harms the host organism. Uh, viruses are parasitic in nature. Um, some protists, like um, protozoa, like that amoeba, uh, those can be uh, parasitic as well. So you can have these different microbes that we're learning about uh, infect a host and harm that host and thereby become parasites or have a parasitic relationship with their host. Infectious versus contagious. Um, infectious means that you have um, some sort of a microbe that is able to infect a surface like a infected wound uh, in the case of these two staph infections. Um, you could have contaminated food uh, that infects your small intestine or large intestinal tract, makes you sick. Um, that infectious disease is going to come from the environment and affect an uh, organism that lives in the environment. Contagious diseases are going to be spread from organism to organism um, by breathing, coughing, infecting surfaces, things like that. Um, so the infectious disease is just going to be some sort of environmental organism like a bacteria that just happens to be living there and is picked up by um, you or some other organism. The contagious disease is going to be something that is spread from person to person or from animal to animal. The last words for the week are outbreak, epidemic, and pandemic. So these are three different ways to describe a contagious disease. Um, an outbreak and epidemic are very, very similar. Uh, outbreak would be if people in a small area, let's say Gravelly Hill, were to all get the same disease, then you'd say you have an outbreak of this disease at Gravelly Hill. Um, if you were to scale that up and you had uh, Orange County and Durham counties were all being affected by the same disease, then you would say that you have an epidemic of that disease. Now, if you scale that up to cross regional boundaries, um, then you'd have a pandemic. So here you can see like this is an epidemic that is happening in northwestern South America. And then a pandemic version of that would have spread throughout South America and Central and North America as well. Um, that is, these are the words for the week. Um, I hope that you have a good week in science.